Uh, let's see what kind of streaming we're going to have. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me all right? Um, everywhere? Are you serious? Okay. All right. Looks like we've got a low stream, but I think we've got enough. It's lower than I like, but I think it's still going to be enough. So let's uh, pray that through. Grab some water, get some coffee if you need to, or iced tea, or get the tea.com, whatever it is that you need to do. I'm, I'm drinking some water tonight. And uh, good to see everybody. Boy, we had a great time, though, in Canton. Canton, Ohio. I'm still in Ohio. Um, we're not in Canton no more, but we are at, still in Ohio. And... Uh, Stopped here for the night so that we can do the show tonight, and then we'll uh, travel on in the morning, all right? So let's see. Everybody's starting to gather in. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody. At uh, We're everywhere tonight. We're on a uh, uh, new live stream. We're on Periscope. Uh, we'll also be archiving on Facebook and Twitter later tonight. We're also live at uh, paulbegleyprophecy.com, and all of you that are... Uh, watching live on Periscope, and everybody watching live on YouTube, and just everywhere. The direct radio line, you dialed the number, 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. All right, good to see. Hello from Minnesota. Blessings from Tennessee. Youngstown, Ohio's in here tonight. Um... Who else is here tonight? Where are you all from? There's Robomom, California. California. Oh, can you guys hear me okay? Because I just don't want to yell tonight. I, I just preached hard last night. I just don't want to yell tonight. Oh, we're live, 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 live. Okay. Connecticut's here. Michigan. Evansville, Indiana's in the house. Arizona, Houston, Florida, New York. Oh, North Carolina, Sacramento, California, Ireland. Now, I can't. There's no way, look how many people from so many places all over the world, there's no way to name them. I saw Kansas, I think I saw Niagara Falls, northern Wisconsin, there's Ireland, Montana, uh, somebody from Yellowstone. Well, that's the title tonight, Yellowstone Super Volcano. Did I even put that up? Is my, did I even put the picture, Super Volcano, on the uh Thumbnail, because I can't remember if I did or not. Texas, California, Washington, Texas, everybody. Corpus Christi, Nashville, uh, just all over the place. Erie, Pennsylvania is here tonight. Anyway, we had a great crowd at the uh, conference in uh, Canton, Ohio. And like I said, there was about 15 people saved last night. There was a lot of folks came forward, but about 15 were born again, and then uh, the baptism today was approximately 20. I do not have the exact count on that, but uh, it was a great baptism. Anyway, just a great conference all the way around. Some great information was brought forth, um, just stunning information. Really, You had the Hagmans there, Doug Hagman, Joe Hagman, Joe Robinson, uh, Mark Trump had a great presentation on AI technology. Pastor uh, Mike Spalding did a great job this morning. Uh, David Hevener on the uh, the last evangelist information, where that's at and, and how that's come along. Also, there was Coach Dave. Uh, L.A. Marzulli Saturday morning was just brilliant. Uh, Russ Dizdar also phenomenal. And, um, well, I can't even think of everybody now. Just a lot of great speakers and, and a lot of wonderful people there sharing with one another. Uh, we had five, I baptized five people who got saved during our online broadcast. Five that came who had been saved online who came to be baptized. And I baptized uh, uh, five more that had uh, got saved on Saturday night during our, when I gave the altar call Saturday night. So that was just great. It was just great. And we're just so many wonderful people, and they came. Uh, nope, Lisa Haven wasn't at that conference. Nope, nope, not this one. Uh, just really, really, really good. Okay, really, really good. All right, you know what I'm going to do? Let's get Max in here. We want we want to hear from the word of the Lord tonight. 
And uh, I preached on Gideon actually last night uh, in Judges chapter 6. Um, and the message was Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, the power of his name. And uh, it was the uh, first time I ever preached it that way. It really, really went well. I think people really, really were blessed. I think what I'll do. I think it was so good. I think we'll just play Judges chapter 6. Heidi, what do you think? Sounds good to me. I mean, just a, it's such a great story, folks. So just here we go. Let's go to the book of Judges chapter 6. And um, let's enjoy the story of Gideon and Jehovah Shalom. Judges 6. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for a multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. I said unto you, I am the Lord your God, fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abiezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Right. And what be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him, and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Let me see a sign. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in, and made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, put and pour the out rock. the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out fire. of the rock, fire. and consumed the flesh, and the unleavened cakes. And then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Until this day it is yet an Ophrah of the Abiezrites. And it came to pass Shalom. the same night, 
But the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw it on the altar of Baal, that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. What? And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock, in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down. What? And the grove was cut down that was by it. He cut it and down. And a second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who, Who hath done this thing? thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death, whilst it is yet morning, if he be a god. Let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Yeah. Therefore on that day he called him Jerubal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Wow. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together, and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali. Everybody. And they came up to meet them. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Wow. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Folks, an amazing story here by, uh, of just faith, really just believing. Um, and we know the rest of the story. So Gideon has shown certainly that this is God telling him to take on the Midianite army. So then after he puts the fleece out, and the fleece has dew on it, but the ground is dry, and he squeaks and he wrings out the fleece, and there's a bowl full of water. Then he but Gideon's test God again said, No, I want to be hundred percent sure I'm putting the fleece out again tonight. I want the fleece to be dry and the ground to be wet. When he got the next morning the fleece was dry, but the ground was soaked with dew. So he knew that this was the hand of God, the direction of God, that he should fight the Midianite army. But the first thing we need to look at, and he wins, we know how he wins. But we want to look at, first of all, was God was saying to Gideon, look, if, if I want you to cut down the altar of Baal, I want you to cut down the altar of Baal, and I want you to cut down the grove that's growing up next to it, because this is why the children of Israel has been in seven years of famine and, and uh, impoverished and under the control of the Midianite army because they have forsaken me and have erected this idol to worship of Baal. And God has said, I'm not pleased with this, so I'm going to let your enemies steal from you and consume you and break you and bring you the whole nation or tribe of Israel into some type of poverty. Poverty. He brought poverty on the economy. Uh, by having the enemy steal their uh, their camels, their cattle, their their sheep, their goats, and and destroy their crops in the field, and this went on for seven years, 
And what I love is when it comes time to sac make a sacrifice on that rock, God says, go get your father's uh, uh, bullock that's been alive seven years. So go get one that's seven years old. And I want you, this is because you were seven years in bondage. I want to break this curse. This kid or this, excuse me, this bullock has been here the whole seven years under this oppression. We're going to sacrifice it. And we're going to let the fire from the rock consume it. And we're going to break the curse. We're going to reverse the curse. And a lot of folks listen to me right now. There's a curses on your life. And it's been brought upon by a portal that's been opened. In some cases, some of you may be trusting more in um, your horoscope than you are in the word of God. Some of you may have more confidence in a psychic than you do in a prophetic word from the Lord. Some of you uh, are spending too much time, uh, you know, looking after, going after a fortune teller or some kind. Some of you are doing seances. Some of you are involved in Ouija boards. And some of you are in just involved in occult practices. What you're doing is you're opening up portals to allow the enemy to not only rob you and impoverish you, but to break you. And so tonight, I want you to, to put an end to this. Stop trusting in mammon. Stop trusting in man. Stop trusting in yourself. And start trusting in the word of the Lord. Start trusting in God. And now we already know what Malachi says. Some of you have robbed me. And they said, well, where in have we robbed you? He said, well, you're tithing offerings. So you're bringing the curses, you're bringing the poverty, you're bringing the po impoverishedness upon you because you might as well build an altar to Baal because you're not believing me. And so I want to say tonight, God wants to reverse that curse. He wants to bless you and he wants to not only bless you, but he wants to lift you up and he wants to empower you in his word. And he wants you to be blessed going in and going out. Now, we can preach on it all night, but I'm not going to. I'm just throwing this out here. This is a powerful word. You want shalom? It's not just a tagline. It's not just something nice to say. If someone says shalom, you say shalom, shalom. No, you got to do more. This is about changing the atmosphere. This is about re reversing the direction that you're going. If it's not working for you, you need to change the direction and, uh, and go to the source which is the source, who is all good and perfect gifts come down from the Father of lights, where there's no veritableness nor shadow of turning. It's time to break the curse, reverse the curse tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, if you're, we're lifting our Sunday night offering as we always do, our tithe and offering unto the Lord on Sunday nights. Thank you and God bless you for being obedient to the Lord. I want you to feel free. Go to right now, go to my website at paulbeckleyprophecy.com and hit the easy button, as Billy Nitrain would say, and give. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, put it on there right now. It makes it easy for us. We can read those and pray over those tonight. Or you can text give if you'd like to do it that way. They'll put this on the screen for you. Or you can write me. Get a, get, get a letter, write a little note, prayer request, a praise report, whatever. Put your offering in an envelope and put it in the mail tomorrow. Check, money order. Put it in the mail tomorrow. Send it as part of your Sunday night live offering. And let's start trusting God in our lives. Can somebody say amen? Praise God. I want to welcome all one, it uh, looks like 1,204 of you that have gathered here tonight already at YouTube. Plus we have folks at New Live Stream, Roku Satellite Television, PaulBegleyProphecy.com, Periscope. What? And those of you that are watching on Twitter uh, and Facebook on, on the archives, YouTube is in the house, everyone, wherever you are. Now, Yellowstone Danger Zone. Can we tell you what's going on? Yellowstone hot spot. There's no doubt about it. Um, Yellowstone super volcano, folks, is not going to go away. It's, it's this most, of all the super volcanoes in the world, this is the most precarious one there is. This is the one that is, without a doubt, all scientists believe this will be the one that blows first. Now, we don't know when that is, and I don't know if that's why Second Peter 3 even says that the earth's going to melt with a fervent heat. Is that part of it? 
Is it because Yellowstone blows? Is this the, is this what happens during the wrath of God, or is this before the wrath of God? You know, no one really really knows. But let me tell you what the scientists are saying. We have a report on this Yellowstone hotspot. Scientists have found the source of the super volcano's heat. Scientists say they have found the source. This article came out last night. A giant volcano lies beneath Yellowstone's National Park, and the heat is generates powers all the hot springs and it and, and, it, and the geysers that are in the entire in the entire area. This under deep, deep, deep underneath Yellowstone National Park is a super volcano, and that is the source of what makes the hot springs warm, hot, causes the geysers to blow, all kinds of stuff. Now, scientists describe Yellowstone as a hot spot marked by an anomalous high temperature. The intense heat produced by this hot spot is responsible for the melting of the crust and the formation of ballistic and uh, rhythmic, uh, rhythmic magma. Uh, the Yellowstone hotspot is fixed within the Earth's mantle and has long been suspected to be part of a mantle plume, an, up, an upwelling of abnormally hot rock within the Earth's mantle. Mantle plumes may originate from the boundary separating the mantle and the core, which is 1,850 miles beneath the surface of the earth, Heidi. What? That's deep, deep, deep. I mean, that sounds like the pits of hell is so deep. I mean, maybe that is what, uh, maybe I know. What? I mean, I don't know. To find evidence of the plume beneath Yellowstone, Study researchers Peter Nelson and Stephen Grand from the University of Texas have used seismic tomography, a technique for imaging Earth's subsurface using seismic waves produced by earthquakes or explosions. Now, the data provided evidence for plume extended from the core mantle boundary all the way to the base of the crust of Yellowstone. The model reveals a single, narrow, syndically shaped, slow anomaly, approximately 350 kilometers in distance, excuse me, in diameter. That's big, 350 kilometers in diameter that we interpret as a whole mantle plume. The anomaly is tilted to the northeast, extends from the core mantle boundary to the uh, surficial position of the Yellowstone hotspot. The researchers wrote in their study, which was published in the Nature Geoscience back in March, our results strongly support a deep origin for Yellowstone's hotspot. Uh, Yellowstone erupts about every 600,000 years, according to the scientist. And its next eruption could be catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic, of a biblical scale. A group of NASA scientists and engineers earlier revealed the idea of stealing the volcano's heat to prevent an eruption. If more heat could be extracted, the volcano may not erupt, according to NASA estimates. That cooling the volcano on its brink of an eruption by 35% could ward off the explosion. But how do you cool a super volcano when the heat's coming from a core uh, 1,850 miles below the surface of the earth? If more heat could be extracted, the volcano may not erupt, said NASA, estimating that the cooling volcano is on the brink of eruption. Uh, the idea is to drill a hole into the side of the volcano, pump water through it. The circulating water would come back out heated 600 degrees. How do you, that, is that scalding or what? Which gives enough time, though, to slowly take enough heat 
from the volcano and prevent the explosion. You would have to give the thermal geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhat deeper and use hotter water than they usually would, said Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The long-term benefit is that you prevent a future supervolcano eruption which would devastate humanity. Scientists, though, however, acknowledge that this idea of saving the Earth from a supervolcanic eruption is far from perfect. Uh, I don't think they can do it. I'll be honest with you. I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it. I, I just don't. Um, and it and what would it cost? And what would really you would you really accomplish anything? Do you really have a clue just how serious this would be? Uh, I just don't think that it would work. Okay, I just don't think so. Uh, but anyway, I'm not a scientist, so it's certainly what was. It doesn't really matter what I think. But I, uh, when I look at the Bible, I think I see where this event of the super volcano in Yellowstone exploding. I can see where that would cause Second Peter chapter two. As a matter of fact, let's just go there for a minute because I think we should read that what's going to happen, and then ask ourselves, could this be from the super volcano that's in the United States? 2 Peter chapter 3 says, the, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, and walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. Okay, so that's that's partly what they're going to say in these last days. Um, all things will continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Well, we know that's not true. Uh, for this they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that went, then was being overflowed with water perished. That's the flood. Of, that was certainly what happened in the days of Noah's flood. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. That's why you can't predict the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't predict the rapture. Because one day could mean a thousand days to the Lord, or a thousand days could mean one day. So no man knows the day nor the hour that the Lord's coming. Now you can see the day approaching based on the prophetic prophetic revelations, prophetic uh, prophecies being fulfilled. Keep an eye on uh, Jerusalem, the cup of trembling, the burdensome stone for all people. Keep an eye on Israel, that is God's prophetic timepiece. Watch all of the prophecies, Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 39, all these armies that surrounding Israel, and the eventual attack on Israel, it's going to happen, and how God's going to destroy the armies that attack Israel, and also keep an eye on uh, Isaiah 17 and the destruction of Damascus, it's also found in Jeremiah 49, 23 through 27, and in that same chapter, keep an eye on the God breaking Iran, breaking its weaponry, breaking them down, and you can find that in Jeremiah 49, 34 through 39, where God says he will break the bow of Elam, Elam, or Iran, he will break the bow of Iran, and he will scatter the Iranians as he sends the four winds from heaven. Now, these are prophecies that you can see Iran, you can see Russia, you can see Turkey, you can see the Ezekiel 38, 39 prophecies coming together, the dry bones is why Israel become a nation. These are all happening. Then just go into Matthew 24 and it says, when they ask Jesus this question, 
as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, they said, Master, can you tell us what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Jesus hadn't even left yet, and they already want to know when he's coming back. And they want to know when is the end of the world. And Jesus says, uh, false Christ and false prophets shall come, and they shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, and all of these are the beginning of sorrows. And so, and then he goes on and talks about a lot of other things that's going to be happening. Well, back to Yellowstone. Let's read on here. Check this out. Here's what he says is going to happen. Whereby the world that was then, then was overflow water, but the heavens and the earth, were, which are now are the same word, are kept in store, reserved to the, they've been saved. The earth was preserved through the flood, but until when? Until the day of fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I mean, so God's got a plan for everybody if you're willing to accept it. Now the Bible says, but, the, but listen to this, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. And the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Is it because of Yellowstone, danger zone? Does Yellowstone and some of these other super volcanoes that are strategically placed all over the globe, do they start erupting and the air starts burning? Literally, the air will even burn. The elements will burn up. Everything. And the Bible says... Uh, but the day of the Lord will come as the thief of the night. So he says, verse 11, See in them that all these things shall be dissolved. The earth is going to be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Tear down your idols of Baal. Cut down the groves. Quit allowing, the. Uh, don't allow false demonic forces to dictate your life take back what the devil has been stealing cut down those false beliefs don't put your faith in buddha or some hindu goddess named shiva don't look to allah don't look to some other name other than the name of jesus christ of nazareth yeshua the messiah the Savior of the world, the Son of the living God, the rock of our salvation, the shelter in the time of storm, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, he that was dead, but he's alive, and that forevermore. And put the Lord first in your life. But look what happens. For the earth's going to melt with a fervent heat, uh, even burn up. See, and then all these things, what manner of persons ought you to be? So you should be looking for and haste into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved with the elements and shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so these are the things we can start looking for. But I can tell you, when I see that Yellowstone is heating up, when the, when the pavement starts melting, when the, when the buffalo and the deer and the antelope and the animals start fleeing and the herds start running out of Yellowstone because the earth is shaking and quaking and the surface is baking and my mind is aching, we're not faking 
Are you serious, folks? You, you can see the signs of the end times taking place right before our very eyes. So we want to keep a close eye on this as we go forward. But back to Yellowstone, uh, they believe that this, they think they now know the source of, of the uh, super volcano. 1,850 miles beneath the surface. A molten lava, magma, at such insane heat that even when it starts to bear just the plume off of a rock, it causes all of the different hot springs there to boil. And... Uh, it's just incredible phenomenon. You got old faithful. It always happens right on time. It's just God's got a perfect timing right now. Let's check the earthquake map real fast as we're talking about volcanoes. And there's been 31 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, guys. 31 earthquakes. Are you serious? Uh, and they are quite extraordinary. Some of them. There was a 4.7 in Indonesia, 4.5 in Iran. 4.6 in Northern Marina Islands and a 4.9 in the Philippines. 3.0 Hawaii, 3.0 Alaska, 3.4 Alaska, 2.7 the U.S. Virgin Islands, 3.3 California. Shaken? What? Robo Mom said it shook her in her house, didn't she? And, uh, we had a 4.2 in Indonesia. We had a 3.4, 3.0, both in Alaska. 2.8, Puerto Rico. 2.7, Hawaii. 2.6, Hawaii. 4.3, Japan. 2.5 and 2.5, again, Volcano Hawaii. 5.0, the South Sandwich Islands. 2.7, Washington. 4.4 Iran, 2.6 Hawaii, 3.6 Round Valley, California. That is the quake that Robo Mom felt. And then we had a 5.2 in Tonga, 4.5 in Nicaragua, Nicaragua, excuse me, Nicaragua, 2.5 Hawaii, 2.8 Mexico, 4.9 Burma, 2.5 Mammoth Lakes, California, 4.6 Japan, and a 3.1 in California, making 31 earthquakes the last 24 hours all over the globe of significance. So we're keeping a close eye on all of those. Now let's talk about the solar winds, the solar flares, and then we're going to talk about the Tennessee shooter here in just a moment. He is still on the loose. We're going to talk about that zombie apocalypse shooter. But here's what's going on with the uh, weather in space, actually. The solar winds are starting to slow down a little bit now to 439 kilometers per second. Um, and there's all kinds of that interplanetary. Did you guys hear about this? Well, we talked about it, I think, on, on Friday. The interplanetary shock wave. Now, Ellie Marzulli came up to me during the, the conference Friday night. He watched my YouTube video on the interplanetary shock wave. And let me tell you what the scientists say it was, and let me tell you what Ellie Marzulli said they, that the New Agers have been waiting for. This is extraordinary. But the geomagnetic activity is subsiding now as the Earth exits the gases wake of an interplanetary shock wave that rattled our planet's magnetic field on April 20th. This was on Friday. According to NOAA and their forecasting, there's a 35% chance of a minor geomagnetic storm today dropping to only 10% tomorrow. But we have aurora alerts. What happened was this shock wave hit the Earth, came out of nowhere, and it was so strong, it quadrupled the energy that was in our mag magnetic, magnetic shield. It also breached the magnetic shield. And when it breached it, it uh, brought a ton of radiation and UV rays 
gases right into the earth. And when it did, it set off a spectacular aurora, out of control aurora, in Canada and northern United States. It was unbelievable, spectacular, but not good for us. Not, not good. It was, we got hit too hard with the radiation. Now, what caused the interplanetary shock wave is still debatable. There was no solar flare on the sun. So it, did it come from the sun at all? Was it part of the five waves of energy? And what will be the ramification of it? It breached our, it breached our protection. It opened, it pierced the veil. It, 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 was there a portal open with this? Okay, it definitely broke through into the, uh, past our shield, which certainly affected the earth. So, this interplanetary deal, did, what does that mean long term? Short term, it created this incredible aurora, and we also had some earthquakes from it. So, you know, look. And of course, in, including Yellowstone, things really started shaking. Now, Southern Lights, when the interplanetary in the interplanetary shock wave hit the Earth's magnetic field, um, northern skies lit up the electric blue auroras. Southern skies lit up with the palette was a little different in color, but the effects are the same. We were inundated with UV rays and radiation from space because somebody pierced the veil. Somebody got through the portal. Something happened uh, in the Earth's atmosphere, and uh, we certainly felt it, no doubt about that. Um, we'll come back to Yellowstone in a minute, but I want to go now to the shooting. I want to welcome everybody here tonight, all 1,500 of you with us on YouTube. We're going to come back to Yellowstone here in just a few minutes. Uh, and we are lifting our Sunday Night Live offering. And so if you're giving tonight, please, if you've got a prayer request or a praise report, put it in there. Go to my website right now, hit the hit the easy button and give tonight and let us pray that your loved ones are saved. If somebody needs to be healed, that they're healed, that the power of God, that the victory of God, it's time to cut down the statue of Baal. It's time to cut down those idol gods and th and that fear in your life. Get rid of this fear and be filled with faith. All right? Be filled with the faith that we have in the Lord. Now, let's take a look at this Travis Renking. What in the world? Are you serious? The Tennessee shooting that happened about four 30 in the morning Eastern time, it was at a Waffle House in Antioch, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Antioch, of course, it's in the Bible, we were first called Christians at a town called Antioch. Well, Antioch, Tennessee saw a madman, a young man, 29 years old, stripped down naked, but having guns going into a Waffle House. Now, on his way into the Waffle House, he shot and killed two people in the parking lot. He went on into the Waffle House and began shooting more people, killing two more, that makes four dead, wounding seven others, whether he shot them or whether the glass that went flying because he just opened fire everywhere. Now, if it hadn't been for this incredible young man, another 29-year-old who, who was in the bathroom, a customer, and he heard the shooting, he stuck his head out to see what was going on. And when he saw uh, when he saw Travis Wren King drop, look down at his rifle, or uh, and look down at his, uh, and I understand it was a rifle, or his gun, that uh, this young man come barging out of the bathroom and tackled him and took his gun away and threw it on the other side of the co counter. And the man that had caused all this problem, bloodshed, he just walked in, just opened up on these people. This man took off running in the nude. Took off running, folks, in the nude. 
This is like a zombie apocalypse situation for sure. Violence is involved. Bloodshed. Is he a programmed shooter? You know, Russ Dizdar is looking into that. But one thing's for sure, this was a bad scene. But the hero is a 29-year-old man by the name of James Shaw Jr. who was monitoring the gunman's moves from afar and jumped into action as soon as he saw the opportunity. He saw the gunman looking at his rifle, and at that point the shots had stopped, so he decided to rush the gunman. Actually wrestling the uh, gun away from the shooter, tossing it over the counter, and at that point the gunman fled the scene, naked. James Shaw Jr., 29, took a selfie of himself Sunday, showing the injury as well as the bandaged hair. Shaw was able to wrestle this uh, rifle away from the shooter. He's a hero. There's no doubt about it. He saved many lives today, folks, by wrestling this gun away from this shooter, the naked zombie apocalypse shooter in Antioch, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Police say that uh, the shooter, Travis Renking, shed his jacket on the floor. Later Sunday morning, he apparently clothed himself with a pair of jeans, some are saying, but others are still reporting that he's nude. Now, a man believed to be Travis Wren King was last seen in a woods line near Discovery of uh, Mountain View Apartments on the Mountain Spring Drive near the Waffle House. So, this is crazy. Authorities have recovered Wren King's jacket nearby, which had two magazines in it for more ammunition. He clearly came armed with a lot of firepower intending to devastate south of Nashville, Tennessee. The suspect was once arrested, and you know this, back last year for having a gun and breaching the security area of the White House. Said he was trying to get a, pres a, a, a meeting with the president. So he's still on the loose. He's still dangerous. He is still on the loose, folks. We got to get this guy in. Let me give you some information. We've got to get him. We got to get him in. You just can't have somebody run around with a gun. Um, and here's the information we have on him. The give me a second. I'll find it. I think. Um, there's a phone number to call. If you call this number, 615-862-8600, if you spot Travis Renking, call this number, 615-862-8600. So we've got a man that we've got to go get. We've got to get him off the streets. This young man's only 29 years old, and the media is really painting this as Christians, you know, gun-toting, uh, Bible-thumping, praying Christians who say they're born again and they believe in, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. They are always trying to paint us in this box, folks. They're always trying to say that we're the problem. But we're not the problem. I'm so tired of the media, which has been completely uh, dictated to by leaders who just hate us and so we're in a very tough spot here but we're going to pray got to get this young man off the streets we have to pray for those that are wounded we have to pray for the families of those that have been murdered we have to get this young man off of the road there's no question get him off of the streets but it's just it's not just this one incident folks we've got uh, evil everywhere you can't regulate against evil i see already you've got you know the um left-wing leaning liberal groups they're going to start pushing again for legislation to take away your second amendment rights which was for uh given to you by the founding fathers um to protect you you have a right to protect yourself so anyway if you've seen travis ring king 
if you've seen Travis Ren King, Ren King, he's 29 years old. Get this, he's out of Illinois. And the nude that's on the loose uh, lived in the one of the toughest states for gun laws in all of America, yet he had his hands on guns. You can pass all the gun laws you want. What's it matter? These people can get a gun and they will use it because they don't think that they can see the Messiah. They don't think they can, you know, go any further unless they rid the world of evil. Well, you can't go around ridding the world of evil. Jesus is the only remedy for the evil that lurks in the heart of men. <sighs> it's just crazy what's going on. Just crazy. Anyway, Travis Ren King is 29 years old. Um, and we gotta get we gotta get him under we gotta get we gotta get him arrested. Get him off the street. Oh, the oldest lady in the world died today. Yep, you got it. Japan again. She lived to be 117 years old. She died today at 117. What? Um, she was from Japan. They eat a lot of fish there. I mean, they just, they're healthy. Uh, and that's where the, on the average now, where people live the oldest on the planet is Japan. It's by far is in first place. Uh, oh, by the way, a toy drone flew over the Saudi Arabian palace and they shot it down. It was a toy drone flying over the palace of Saudi Arabia, but the Saudi Arabians can't take no chance on that. Anyone could be using the toy drone, drone and anybody could be using it for surveillance or maybe even weaponize it for all I know. I don't know. So this toy drone was been shot down over the royal palace in Saudi Arabia. Matter of fact, let me see if I have this uh, article. Here we go. Um, Saudi forces down a, a toy drone that was near going over top of the property, and actually right over top of the uh, capital of North Korea excuse me, of Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia forces have shot down this toy drone near the royal palace uh, as videos posted online purported to show that the area ringing with heavy gunfire. The official spokesman for North Korea, police said on Saturday that security forces dealt with an unauthorized drone-type toy after spotting it at a security point in the neighborhood. An investigation into the incident, which happened at 7.50 p.m., uh, was underway. There was no immediate information about any injuries or damage, praise God, but the footage, the footage did share on social media appear, appeared to show heavy shooting that lasted for at least 30 seconds sparking speculation of political unrest, and Al Jazeera could not independently verify the authenticity of the videos of the drone. But we have information from Saudi Arabia's government that this drone was flying over the royal palace. What? I told you guys, remember I used to tell you, I got drones over my home. Somebody phone home and James Homey, James Comey, his homies and his phony testimony. Now we got drones over our homes and the NSA. What do you say? The TSA, everybody's listening to everything we say. I mean, seriously, guys, are you serious? Every move you make, every step you take, every breath you take, they are watching you. It's being recorded. You're being identified. Somebody testify. They don't want you to live or die. What? Everybody's being put in some kind of category. Everybody's being profiled. 
Everybody's being identified. Everybody's being profiled, being put into. It's all in the in the computers. It's in the cloud. Okay, they put it in the cloud. Right? Jesus is coming back on the clouds, not not the Microsoft cloud either. He's coming back on the clouds of glory. But um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, are you serious? What is going on here? I mean, this is America. Right? I mean, I think I think it is. It's supposed to be, although it doesn't, uh, sometimes I wonder. You know, that's what Mark Trump was talking about today, how that the AI technology is messing up everybody. I mean, it's, 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 it's breaking. And let me just say this. AI technology is a breach in your privacy. And this tech, and he started talking about the mark of the beast. He started talking about the image of the beast, that they're going to be able to make an image of the beast that can speak, that can cause as many as don't take the image of the mark of the beast, can be put to death. I've been saying this for how many years, and now here's Mark Trump, an expert in AI technology, bringing up the same point today in the conference. I mean, are you serious? <sighs> Look, we don't care. I like the advancing in technology. I like to see what look we're, what we're doing right now is tremendous advance in technology. We're doing a live broadcast with people from all over the world simultaneously, live, 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 Sunday night live. It's a good thing. People are being saved. People are being touched. People' lives are changing. Hopes being restored. But at the same time, the devil wants to take the same technology and use it against us. Imagine all the people living in online fantasy. Ah, ah, ah. I mean, seriously, Heidi, it's it's you know there there's this there's this. Cloud of, of the uh, we got in, in the midst of the cloud of the fog of the controversy that we, we we've got to try to figure out what's going on. They're passing these laws, and um, uh, I just don't understand why they're doing this. Um, other than this world, there used to be a song to sing. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me at heaven's open door. And I think, and I can't be at home in this world anymore. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just crazy. It's just, uh, it's, it's just an insanity. We got toy drones over our homes, and they're listening to our phones, and and, our, and all the everybody's starting to moan, and, every, and they're starting to groan. I, matter of fact, I think that the birthing pains of the planet uh, is, you know, these earthquakes and asteroids and sinkholes and and uh, interplanetary shock waves and meteorites and and i didn't even tell you about that can i go back to the space where can you hang with me a minute starting to uh catch my second wind here okay 33 fireballs went past the earth today 33 33 fireballs broke excuse me broke through the earth's atmosphere plus you had an interplanetary shock wave five waves of energy mike from around the world told us that we were going to go through these things. And then you have asteroids. Asteroids! Breaking, going past the Earth. What? Heidi, it happened today. Remember when I told you you have to don't go by the chart because they could always discover an asteroid. It could all of a sudden go scraping by you. It happened, folks. It happened. I just, just now turned to the chart. Asteroid 2018 HV, was which, which was not on the chart yesterday has been discovered, and it went by the Earth. It missed us by 0.4 lunar distance, or a less than 100,000 miles. Now, it was a little rock, only six diameters. But if it would hit us, it would have been 
a catastrophe. Wherever it hit, it would have caused a catastrophe. Even that small. Because the speed and the impact, and we could have caused a tsunami or an earthquake, certainly would have brought radiation, sonic booms. Um, it could have devastated buildings. It just depends where it landed. This thing just scraped by again today. wasn't on the charts yesterday. We had nothing projected to be even close to the earth. But they can't see these little ones that are coming right at us that are very close. And at the last second, within a couple hours, maybe three hours before they pass, they spot it. And, you know, they get it up on the chart. But it's, you know, if there was, there's no way to stop a deep impact because we can't identify things fast enough. Uh, I'm not faulting NASA. I think NASA's trying as hard as they can. I'm not so sure they're going to tell us if we're going to have a deep impact. I don't think they're going to let us know because it doesn't do any good. And anyway, they wouldn't know where it's going to hit at, so there's no need causing a panic. Just let it hit. Then report on it. That's what I think they're going to do. But they do tell us when they see some out there, and then this one coming by very close. Um, wow. It's just uh, It shows you the vulnerability we are. Uh, we've got, uh, we're at the top of the hour here. I, look, we're going to talk about the Tennessee shooter, the naked zombie apocalypse shooter. He's still on the loose. I, they haven't caught him yet, have they? I don't know. I don't think they have. And you guys can keep us uh, alert on that if, if, if they do. Duck! That's what I'm saying. That's how quick it's going to happen. Did you know that the Bible says that as, uh, oh, did you guys hear about that bombing? Uh, in uh, Cabal in Afghanistan at one of their voting uh, where you register to vote. Somebody detonated a bomb at the voting election center. 63 people are dead. Scores are wounded. Horrific scene. You're never going to have a democracy, guys, in Afghanistan. Are you serious? We've got to stop even trying this. Just, just let them live the way they want to live, and it, it, we got to quit trying to build, trying to force people to do what we think they should do. If they can't get it, we got to leave them alone. We just got to leave them alone. They're never going to do it. They're never going to do it. These guys don't want to operate like this. Look, they don't even want to operate like this in America anymore. The Democrats, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the fake dossier, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, everybody else. You know, James Comey, Robert Mueller. Um, nobody wants to do what they're supposed to do. The, the, the corruption. They, they're so angry at Donald Trump, they can't see straight right now. And um, this is why you're seeing all this technology dividing people up, doing all of these kinds of things that they're doing. It's just incredible to me. I mean, how we're being profile you know some of us are going to be considered deplorable irredeemable or what they mean by it not they won't have they're going to identify some of us and say no need to even try to change this one's mind to reprogram them this is a born again believer in Christ and the Bible and they and there, there's no need Category them over here in the X file or wherever they're going to put us because this one is irreversible or irredeemable or a total deplorable. So it's just really, really sad, guys. We're gonna, uh, it's the top of the hour. We're lifting the Sunday night live offerings we do every Sunday night. I'd like to check and see some of the prayer requests maybe that are coming in. Can I just read a few before I come back to my current events? We got to talk about North Korea, we got to talk about a lot of stuff here. Uh, the Pentagon saying they're not ready for, for a space uh, confrontation, a space war. I'll tell you about that. But let's go to uh, check on the uh, prayer prayer requests that are coming in tonight as, uh, as people are giving their Sunday night offering and their tithing offering. And just being obedient to God. And we do this every... And God is blessing. Folks, we met so many people this weekend who are part of our online church, people that have been in our chat rooms. We got pictures. We met four students of our online school. Um, 
it's just incredible to me. We met people who've been saved, five people that's been saved during uh, live altar, altar calls that we do online. I mean, all of this was just so incredible to me. I just, I'm still, we're so blessed to just to meet every one of you out there. Let's see what some of the uh, praise reports and prayer requests. Okay, Peggy, pray for our country, our president, and deliver us from the destruction of our culture. God bless you. That's what I'm talking about right there. Thank you, Peggy. You're so right. Also, uh, Scott, uh, said he gives his tithe also and says, we have a meeting with the elders uh, at his church tomorrow night. It's about having you come to the church. I'm surprised. I had a feeling they were not going to do it. Now they're going to have a meeting with the elders tomorrow night to come to New Jersey, Heidi. Yes. Wouldn't that be good? We're ready. Talk about it, guys, and then we can work out a timing. That would be great. Scott, I'm praying that it, it's going to work. Also, Kristen. Kristen sends in her offering and tithe tonight and says, Thank you, Pastor Paul and Heidi. If a day is like a thousand years... Can a thousand-year reign of Christ be one day? Yes, it can. One long day of Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible even says that the time will be no more. Basically, now what does that mean exactly? I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe it means as far as we know it. But it, yes, the answer is yes. He is going to rule and reign a thousand years, or it could be one big day. Or also, I'm a coffee lover like you, but years ago I switched to organic coffee due to the pesticides sprayed on the regular coffee. These wreak havoc on your nervous system. Also, for all as much coffee as I drink, that's not good. But uh, also for all the allergies, you're right. I know you're right. And the asthma suffers. Look into these food-grade hydrogen peroxide humili humidifiers. This is helping my family tremendously. So please tell your listeners who are sick out there with all those diseases to look into natural alternatives which the Lord has provided. All right. Well, we're going to do that. Shalom, shalom to you as well. Kristen, Sandra Lee, Sandra sends in her tithe and offering and says, please pray for our cousin's marriage. They love the Lord and we love them. All right, Sandra, we will do that. Paul sends in his offering tonight from Hawaii. Aloha, Heidi. Hawaii's calling. All right. We're asking for prayers. Paul was injured in an accident at work. Can you please lay spiritual hands on him for God's mercy and a quick healing? He is, he is our family's sole provider. So thank you so much. We love you, Stephanie. Steph, we will. We will pray for him tonight. No doubt about it. And then there's Vernon. Vernon has been at the conference all weekend. Vernon and Sylvia. Um... Sylvia and I had a great time at Occupy 2018. We are so overloaded with the information you got right. We are so blessed and renewed with spiritual strength and purpose because of the event. This was Sylvia's best birthday gift ever. We got to meet all the speakers there. We got many pictures with them. It was a blessing to meet some of our online friends, our revival friends, our new friends we made at the event. We got to do this again. God bless you and Heidi and safe trip back home. Well, we look forward to being back, Vern, with you and Sylvia next weekend back at our home church in Knox, Indiana. Of course, Vern's also one of the musicians and singers on the praise teams. Sylvia always is such a delight in worshiping the Lord there. It's great to have them uh, with us from our home church in Knox. Also, Jared Jared, God bless you, sends in his offering tonight. said, I would like to pray for Begley Bunch to keep Jesus in their hearts and the Holy Spirit in their souls. Keep fighting a good fight. Well, thank you, Jared. We, we, we agree with you in prayer on that in Jesus' name. Pamela says, as she gives her offering, just give Jesus the praise. All right, Pamela. Praise God. God bless you, Brandon, for your offering. God bless you, Susan, for yours. Gary also sends in his and says, bless you and Heidi on your travels and Israel, your travels and Israel in these end times. We're real close, aren't we? Yes, we are, Gary, to answer that question. Yes, we are. And then there's Vicki. Vicki sends in her love offering tonight. She says, God bless you, Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi. Please pray for my dad. He fell. He had to have a partial hip replacement. 
He had to have two units of blood today. He's having a lot of confusion. Please. And, and you know what? God bless this amazing. This is Vicki of Missouri. Vicki of Missouri. Okay. So, Vicki, we're going to be praying in Jesus' name for your father. Rebecca sends in her tithe and offering says, I drive a lot for my job. A lack of respect for the law by other drivers is starting to take its toll. You know, you're right. So please pray that I do not develop road rage. Amen. Don't do this. Don't do this. Um, um, uh, this is a serious prayer request. I'm starting to hate driving, and this impacts other areas of my, my life. You know what? You're being honest, Rebecca. You're being honest in this. And it is a serious concern. There, It seems to me like there's more aggressive drivers than ever before. Taking chances, going in and out of lanes. Uh, you know, a lot of aggress, aggressive drivers. And uh, I do pray for your protection out there. And stay calm. Stay cal Just stay relaxed. Keep just driving and, 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 and let Jesus... Jesus, take the wheel. Okay, just let, let Jesus take over, all right? Uh, <laughs> oh, praise God. But I, I, I will pray. It is a serious request, and we are praying for you. And then there's Kenneth. Kenneth sends in his uh, tithes. says, thanking God that neither one of our grandsons was injured in a school shooting at the Forest High School here in Ocala last Friday. And guess what? I didn't even know about that, Kenneth. Did you, Heidi? School shooting down there in Orlando, Florida. I mean, excuse me, in Ocala, Florida. Uh, so, praise God that your grandsons weren't injured in a school shooting there. Pray for a complete recovery of the young man who was injured. And that the shooter will find Jesus. You know, it's, this is getting crazier by the minute, the shootings. Uh, praise God. And then there's Tatiana. Tatiana and Rick out there in Washington State saying, God bless as they give their tithe and offering, Rick and Tatiana. And then there's Deborah. And Deborah says, uh, she gives her tithe. She says, prayer request, Pastor and Heidi, please pray for back strength for my husband, Ryan, so that he may get through the next five years without another surgery. This is when he plans to retire from a back-breaking job he's done for 45 years. He's got five more years to go, Heidi. Wow. Deborah, we're going to pray for him. Bless him in Jesus' name. Also, Jeremiah and Ian sends in a tithe and offering. Uh, and so does Debbie. So does Don. So does John, Richard, Judy. And just God bless all of you. Uh, Keith sends in his tithe and offering. Says, please accept this as my tithe and offering. God bless you, Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi. This is Keith in New Hampshire. God bless you, Keith. Also, there's Carol and there's Chris. And there's the uh, phot phot photonic systems, also Lori and Kimberly, uh, praise God, and Cindy and Ronald. There's also Crystal, and uh, God bless you, all of you. Crystal, I see that, uh, hang on one second, Crystal's got a prayer request here. Let me uh, get that one uh, if I can. And... Um, Says, love you, Pastor Paul. Kind of miss your old intro to your program, the one that featured the lady's voice. Yeah, I kind of miss it too, you know. That was, that was, it was from Revelation chapter 7. I miss it too. Um, yeah, I could play, I, well, I can't play her intro because that intro was actually part of our Blog Talk radio when we used Blog Talk radio. And we had that downloaded onto that. And when we went off Blog Talk radio, that, that intro went away as well. Um, but you know what? We can play. We can play that scripture that was read. I can let Max read it. It's the same scripture that she read, and so uh, we'll try that again. Okay, we'll try that again. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow night. How about that? How about Monday night? We'll try it on Monday night. If you're around, be listening. We'll we'll uh, read from that. We'll let Max read from that scripture. Okay. Thank you, though. Praise God. That was the voice that you're referring to is Sister Devora. Uh, who read that for us. Praise the Lord. So as you're giving tonight, just feel free and give. We're going to be praying for more uh, prayer requests as we go forward. Uh, and we just praise God for each and every one. You, the Lord may bless every one of you 
in Jesus' name tonight. God's so good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let me go back to some of the uh, current events that is going on right now around the world. Um, that's kind of shocking in a lot of ways. If you're wondering about Yellowstone, I want to go back to that for a minute. Because Yellowstone, uh, they're concerned the next eruption could be catastrophic. A group from NASA scientists and engineers earlier revealed the idea of stealing the volcano's heat to prevent an eruption. Get this. If more heat could be extracted, the volcano may not erupt, is what they're thinking. Now, NASA estimates that cooling the volcano on its brink of an eruption by 35% could ward off the eruption. But how do you cool a, a volcano that deep and deep, deep, deep into the earth? The idea was to drill a hole into the side of the volcano, pump water through it. The circulating water would come back out, of course, heated over 600 degrees, which, given enough time, could slowly take enough heat from the volcano and prevent an explosion. You would have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhat deeper and use hotter water than they usually would, said Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But the long-term benefit is that you prevent a future super volcano eruption which would devastate humanity. Scientists, however, acknowledge that this idea of saving the Earth from a super volcano eruption is far from perfect, but at least they're thinking about it. Um, they realize that it's going to eventually blow. It's, it has to. It's building too much pressure, and it doesn't let enough of it off to prevent it from eventually blowing. So, I mean, they know this. And so when you realize that, you know, you have to, you think about ways. And look, we're not going to be able to save the planet. I just read 2 Peter 3. We're not going to be able to stop the wrath of God that's coming. We're not going to be able to stop the the uh, the precursors, the, the, the birthing pains. We're not going to be able to hold back the prophecies of the Bible at the end of time. We just can't. But, um, you know, the, they realize that this thing's going to go. They realize it's going to happen. Uh, they know it's going to happen. And so uh, people need to be ready. Someone just said, I want to be baptized at Pastor Paul's church. Well, come on. We're going to be doing that. Summer fire is coming up at the end of July, isn't it, Heidi? Yes. And Kevin Wilson's going to be our guest uh, with us all weekend long. Summer fire is going to be amazing. And oh, by the way, I need to say this right now. Colorado Springs. I don't know how many people are signed up for this, but it is time to get signed up. We are coming Look, we're, we're on our way home right now from Ohio, but we're going to be in Colorado Springs on for two nights. Two nights in Colorado Springs at the Salvation Army. At the Salvation Army in Colorado Springs, Colorado, May the 4th and 5th. May the 4th and 5th, Colorado Springs, Colorado. It is time for you to come. It's a free conference. It is time that you plan on coming. Would you go to our website right now. Go to my website at paulbakeleyprophecy.com and register and say, Pastor, I'm coming. If you live in Colorado, this is almost mandatory. If you live in the state, I've never preached in Colorado. Who knows? Maybe I'll never preach there again. I don't know. I don't know how much time we have left. I'm trying to make my way around to all the states. and that it's, I figure that's going to take me a, a, a few years. I'm working on it. But uh, we're finally coming to Colorado. You guys have begged us to come. Here we are. And, and so everybody that watches us in Colorado, Denver, uh, and all of you in Colorado Springs, everybody in the surrounding around the state, if you can get there, make it an effort. Make the effort to come. We want to meet you. We want to be with you. We want to worship with you. We want to have the power of God. I want to, I want to be able to shake your hand and give you a hug and say, welcome. Uh, it's coming up uh May 4th and 5th, May 4th and 5th, Colorado Springs, Colorado, at the Salvation Army in Colorado Springs, Colorado. That's going to be a Friday night and a Saturday night. Heidi, is that right? Yes. 
and um, you want to be there. You just absolutely want to be there. Um, so get registered tonight. Get registered tonight if you're coming. If you live in any of the surrounding states, I mean, if you're you know if you're living up there in Nevada, or you're living in Idaho, or you're in Wyoming or Montana, or or you know the Dakotas. It's time to get here. It's time to get to Colorado Springs, Colorado, coming up uh, May 4th and 5th. It will be powerful, and we truly look forward to seeing all of you guys there. It's going to be great. Um, oh, and what else is going on? i got to say real fast here. We'll come back to, uh, yeah, so we're going up there to where it's close, not, not real close to Yellowstone, but I just want to get a little close over there and uh, see what's going on, okay? We really want to see what's going on. Because, uh, wow. Oh, by the way, back to Saudi Arabia for just a second. Saudi Arabia, besides the drone, I mean, there's a threat on the capital of Saudi Arabia. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. The Houthi rebels who are funded by the Iranians, they want to blow up the Black Stone. They want to destroy Mecca. They want to put an end to the Saudi Arabian Sunni Muslim uh, style of Islam because these radical Shiites want to be in control of Islam and they want to blow up Jerusalem. They want to wipe Israel off the pages of history. They want to do the Psalms 83. And so this is why we hear a lot about Saudi Arabia going to war with Iran, that eventually it's going to happen with some of the Different countries are going to side on different sides, uh, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, what's coming? There's no question about it. It's coming. Uh, let me tell you something else that's going on. Let's, we got to talk about North Korea. So you know, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Uh, he is really pushing hard to get the North Koreans to lay down their nuclear weapons, to denuclearize. And the fact that Kim Jong-un has announced on Friday that he's shutting down, he has shut down the main missile testing facility and that uh, he's willing to denuclearize. He's willing to denuclearize. But to do it, he needs to know that he's going to be safe. So he's already starting the negotiations. The deal is already being worked on, folks. President Trump has been tweeting on Saturday and again today how that North Korea is ready to denuclearize, that North Korea is, is ready to come to the table, that President Trump and uh, North Korea's leader Kim Jong Un are going to have a summit. This is coming up, I think, in late May. They're saying now late May, early June. So it looks like the U.S. Embassy is going to open in Jerusalem before Trump meets with Kim Jong Un. I thought maybe he would meet with Kim Jong Un first and then. Embassy, but it looks like the embassy is going to be first, then the meeting with Kim Jong Un. But the negotiations have already begun. Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, soon to be the Secretary of State, he is he's already doing the job of the Secretary of State. He already went to North Korea. He already met with Kim Jong Un. And so, you know, look, I always look. I take everything like this. I I'll be honest with you. Eyes wide open. I'm coming in. Eyes wide open. I realize that Kim Jong-un, you can't trust what he says exactly. But if he does agree to do this and allow U.S. and maybe other neutral countries inspectors to keep coming in to make sure he's not refiring up that nuclear system, and if he's willing to play by the rules, the United States of America will help the North Korean people. And not just the United States, but I'm sure the Japanese and the South Koreans and the Philippines and Vietnam and China. And there's no doubt in my mind that China, and I had a discussion with, with a, a guy last night who would certainly know, uh, that China is 
saying to Kim Jong-un, look, look, you're going to have to, look, Trump is not playing games. He will, he will smack you. And he's already hurting us now with the trade war. Okay, so you got you can see all the battleships, and you can see all the nuclear subs. He's setting right off your shore. He's got twenty eight thousand troops setting right next door to you. And this ain't George W. Bush. This isn't Bill Clinton you're dealing with. This isn't Barack Obama you're dealing with. This isn't the establishment presidents that you're dealing with. You're dealing with a guy who's just sick and tired of seeing America threatened. This guy doesn't care what the what the company line is. He doesn't care what the New World Order or the global elitists think he should do. This guy don't flat, don't care. So you're going to have to lay down your guns. We've got your back. You're killing us with our trade. We can't deal with Trump. And this is China now. China's got to be saying that. They're going to be saying, look, we can't, you're making us, you're giving me a migraine over here. You're going to have to lay down your weaponry. Let us, we will protect you. We will protect you. But uh, and he'll give you money and help out. We can all. You're gonna have to just stop it, okay? So I think that's what's happened. President um, uh, Jinping has finally gotten uh, Kim Jong Un in a headlock and said, "This is what you're going to do." And now Kim Jong Un realizes it. That you know he doesn't need to shoot any more rockets off or blow up any more nukes underground. That it's time. But I hope the United States, besides just getting him to lay down the nuclear ambitions. I'm hoping that also we can discuss some human rights issues. The way the people in that country are being treated, the way they're being starved, the way they're being Christians are put in prison and tortured. Uh, you know, I think we got to bring up some of this stuff. And and I'm not saying make let let him stay in power. Okay, you can't just you know, if you can get him to do what we ask him to do so he's not a threat to the world, he can stay in power. We'll help his country and try to help him financially. But he also needs to take a look at his human rights, especially his absolute insanity when it comes to religious tolerance. There is none there. There's none there. It's him. You have to worship him. Basically, North Korea lives under the mark of the beast already. They're already under the mark of the beast. If you know, he's the beast and they're under it. And uh, it's not the mark of the beast of Revelation yet, but certainly they might as well say they're in it. And um, he's been in power now seven years. He went in power in the year 2011. And that country was already a mess before he got in power. Now it's even worse. And so let's keep a close eye. But anyway, Trump's excited about where he's at with this thing. He sees a chance to maybe solve this, and let's pray that he can. Guys, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Have they caught this Tennessee uh, shooter, Waffle House shooter, um, the naked shooter, uh, the zombie apocalypse shooter? Uh, I'm going to check and see it with the latest here in the last hour or so. Do we have any? Updates. He is still loose. The last I checked an hour ago, um, um, everybody's trying to find him, and he is still on the run. Let's see what we have here. Now they're saying um, twenty. Here's the here's the latest update. Thirteen minutes ago. Latest update, Tennessee Waffle House shooting suspect may be armed, says the police. Um, police warn that the gunman accused of killing the four people early this morning at the Waffle House near Nashville, Tennessee, in a town called Antioch, Tennessee. That's the name, of course, the Christians were first called Christians at Antioch in the Bible. Authorities say the suspect is a 29-year-old white male by the name of Travis Renking, who recently moved to Nashville, Tennessee, out of Illinois, that he still may have two weapons on him. He uh, had a handgun and a rifle. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation added Renking to its top 10 most wanted list, Heidi, right now. Mm -hmm. And according to authorities, police have swarmed the homes 
and swaths of woods in the area of the shooting. They're they, swarming every house in the area, searching for the suspect who authorities believe may be close by. After Ren King fled the scene of the shooting completely naked, how did this guy get away? Police believe he went to his apartment, put on a pair of pants, and escaped into the woods. Sheriff deputies 400 miles north of Nashville, Tennessee, in Taserwell County, Illinois, where, where Ren King recently lived, were also on high alert. He murdered four people with no apparent reason and no apparent motive. So we're very concerned, said the Metropolitan Nashville Police Chief Stephen Anderson. Is this one of these program shooters, Heidi, that uh, Russ Dizdar talked about this weekend? I mean, do we have another one of these? I don't know if this kid had any military uh, training or not. Now, Ren King arrived at the Waffle House in Antioch, Tennessee, southeast of Nashville at 3.19 a.m. wearing nothing but a green jacket. According to Metro Nashville Police, <clears throat> the suspect sat in his pickup truck for three and a half to four minutes just looking at people inside the restaurant at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, Ren King got out of his pickup truck with a rifle and he fatally shot two people who were outside of the Waffle House, according to police. He then went inside the restaurant and continued firing the gun. Aaron said that police responded to the active shooter call at 3.25 a.m. Some witness, witnesses suffered cuts on their faces from the shattered windows. Two more victims inside the restaurant were fatally shot. Chuck Cadoro, who was on break from his other job he has at the 24-7 roadside serviceman, was about to walk into the restaurant when the shooting took place. He said, I was very lucky. Where I usually sit, one woman was killed, another was shot, he told CNN. I was very fortunate to have gone not gone into the Waffle House, and I sat in my car. My friend T, the cook at Waffle House, did die as he was shot trying to get away. Uh, Travis Renking fatally shot the Waffle House employee Turin C. Sanderlin, another 29-year-old, out of Goodlettsville, Tennessee. He also killed Joe Perez, 20 years old, out of Nashville, uh, outside of the restaurant. Also, Ekala De Silvia, 23, of Antioch, who was shot outside, later died at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. The identity of a fourth person who was fatally wounded in the restaurant is a 21-year-old woman from Gallatin, Tennessee, has not been released her name. But Shantia Wagner, 21, of Nashville, Tennessee, and Sharita Henderson, 24, of Antioch, Tennessee, were both injured and are being treated at Vanderbilt Hospital. This morning, our city woke up to this tragic news, said the Nashville mayor, David Briley. The fragility of life was brought home to us all by the death of these four innocent uh, people from Nashville. But there is a hero. The carnage stopped only because of the heroics of a customer who heard the gunshots while he was in the restaurant's bathroom. Police said the customer identified as a relative as James, he was identified by a relative. His name is James Shaw Jr., he was, a, he was monitoring the gunman's moves from afar and jumped into action when he saw an opportunity. He saw the gunman looking at his rifle, and at that point, the shots had stopped, so he decided to rush the gunman, actually wrestle the gun away from him and toss it over the counter. At that point, the gunman then fled. Um, 
Uh, Shaw is also 29 years old. He is a hero. No doubt about it. He saved many lives by wrestling this gun away and tossing it over the counter and prompting the man to leave. Police said that Ren King shed his jacket and fled on foot completely in the nude. Last um, we heard is they believe he apparently went to his apartment and put on a pair of pants, still has a couple guns, they believe, and uh, his name is Travis Ren King, and uh, he was last seen in the woods near, near Mountain View Apartments. Now, there's a phone number you can call if you see him. That phone number, if you're there out down there in Tennessee, that phone number is 615-862-8600. Again, that number is 615-862-8600. we got to get this guy off the road. We need some prayer warriors praying. I need, I need some prayer warriors absolutely praying. I would like to hear this guy has been arrested before I go off the air. I would like to hear that he's been arrested and off the road, off out of society. I, I don't want him to shoot and kill himself. I don't want him to shoot anybody else. I want him to be arrested. I would love for that to be. I don't want him to shoot at police officers. Um, but we got to get this kid. We got to get him off the road. We got to find out what in the world's wrong with him. Uh, obviously, this is a horrific situation. And so we are truly praying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that this, this is a zombie apocalypse type scenario where the superhuman strength, I mean, the guy ran away on foot and got away from all the police and they can't, the dogs, they had dogs tracking him and the dogs lost the scent. How in the world does that happen? How do you run completely in the nude? No shoes? How do you run away from the, after killing four people in a restaurant? How are you able to run completely in the nude, outrun the police, outrun everybody chasing, somehow get back to your apartment, get a pair of pants, probably get more guns, they assume he has, run into the woods, and, and they've got hound dogs, they've got helicopters, they've got squad cars, they've got Special SWAT teams, they're sending in everybody, ex-military, who knows what all they've got in there. And you're telling me this one kid, nude, got away? It just, it just, is he, is he a shooter? Is he a, is he a pro program shooter? Is he a program runner? Is he an MK Ultra? Is he Jason Bourne? I mean, who is this guy? And how, how in the world do you do that? Um, but again, when you look at the... I was preaching out last night about the zombie apocalypse. I was preaching about how, um, you know, Legion, how he roamed the tombs naked with superhuman strength and if couldn't contain him. Um, you know, again, violent. Um, we've seen this time and time and time again. Could it be drugs? Maybe could it be uh, could it be bath salts? Could it be flaca? Could it be some acid? I don't know. Um, could it be demonic? It's certainly demonic. Is he possessed? I would say yes. Whether he's using drugs or not won't matter. He's possessed. This is a, a an act of insanity. This is an act of pure violence. He killed. Murdered people without a cause, cold blood, and he was nude. I mean, what in the world is going on here? This is demonic. And um, I feel sorry for his family right now. I'm praying for him. He's from Illinois. How did he get a gun? Remember, he got arrested last summer because he was at the White House. And he breached security there with a gun. Uh, you know, he got arrested and everything. And then they shipped him back to Illinois, and somehow he got a guns. He got guns again. One one uh, account I think Heidi you found on Twitter was his father gave his guns back to him, but we don't know if that's verified or not, do we? Or is that one of the media now? Heavy dot com. Heavy dot com, which is a pretty good. Can I check it again? Should we check it again? There might be an update there. A lot of times they, these guys are good. 
We'll go there right now and see. Um, let me see. Uh, give me one second here. second here. Sorry about that. So hang on. Um, hang on once. I know this is live and I'm researching on the fly, but let's do this. Um, here we go. Five things you need to know about Travis Wren King. Um, let's see if there's anything new here. This man who was arrested at the White House last summer while trying to set up a meeting with President Donald Trump went in and opened fire at a Waffle House in Tennessee early this morning, killing four people, wounding two others before he was stopped by a heroic customer the shooter then fled from the scene and remains at large. The gunman was identified by police as Travis Renking, 29, began shooting other patrons at the, uh, and employees at the Waffle House, which is a 24-hour restaurant in Murfreesboro Pike in Antioch, Tennessee, near Nashville. A total of six people were shot, according to Metro Nash Nashville Police who are leading the investigation with help from state and federal agencies now. you got the FBI involved now. Three victims were pronounced dead at the scene. One later died at the hospital. Two are currently hospitalized. Um, police are searching for Ren King near his apartment. Um, he's been added to the top ten most wanted list. One weapon owned by him was found at the scene, but at least two other guns were unaccounted for. There's a $2,500 reward right now being offered for his apprehension. Ren King was arrested by the Secret Service back in July of 2017 after he entered restricted area outside the White House trying to get a, a, um, a meeting with President Trump. According to Secret Service, Ren King made unlawful entry after going into a bike rack area that was past a line where unauthorized access is allowed. A spokesman for the agency said that Ren King refused to leave after being asked to and was then taken into custody, charged with unlawful entry. The case was dismissed, though, in November after Ren King completed a first-time offender diversion program. The Secret Service said Ren King told agents he was at the White House to make an appointment with the president. Um, okay, so that's pretty well everything we already knew, except he's, he was only wearing a coat. He then fled the scene in the nude. Uh, you know, and like I said, he's outrun everybody. Nobody can catch him. Um, it's just crazy. It's getting crazier by the minute, this story. And so we've got it. We, you know, look, it's unbelievable what's going on. It's just unbelievable. Let's go back to North Korea now. Where are we with North Korea and, and Kim Jong un and President Trump? Let's get the latest on that. Uh, and see if there's been any breakthroughs since, really, f Friday evening. Um, North Korea. Let's just see if Kim Jong-un or Trump is... 52 minutes ago. Um, Israeli National News. 38 minutes ago, the is, is Israel National News, Trump is insisting that North Korea dismantle its nuclear arsenal. Um, the President of the United States, U.S. President Donald Trump, will urge North Korea to act quickly to dismantle its nuclear arsenal when he meets North Korean leader Kim Jong-un next month. He isn't willing to grant North Korea substantial sanctions relief in return for a freeze of its nuclear and missile tests. That's not enough. So Trump is keeping the sanctions on North Korea 
until they dismantle, until they literally dismantle the pace of North Korea's nuclear dismantlement and the timetable for sanctions Reliefs stand to be the major issues now for the summit between the two. When the president says he will not make the mistake of the past, that means the United States will not be making substantial concessions such as lifting sanctions until North Korea has sub substantially dismantled its nuclear programs. According to a senior Trump administration official, if North Korea is willing to move quickly to denuclearize, then the sky is the limit. All sorts of good things can happen, said the official. And in March, Trump unexpectedly agreed to a meeting with Kim Jong-un to be held by the end of May. Later, Kim Jong-un acknowledged for the first time his country's contacts with the United States. And U.S. officials recently said that North Korea had directly confirmed that Kim Jong-un was willing to negotiate about a potential denuclearization. Now, yesterday, Kim Jong-un announced that his country would, clo would close, close its nuclear test site and suspend its long-range missile test. The statement has been hailed as an important move to establish a good atmosphere for the summit meeting. But Trump himself described Kim Jong-un's statement as a big progress in a tweet on Friday. Though in a Twitter message today, he added a note of caution. We are a long way from conclusion on North Korea. Maybe things will work out. Maybe they won't. Only time will tell. He's still negotiating, folks. In a meeting, though, with North Korea over the Easter weekend, Kim Jong-un reportedly tried to push Central, the CIA director Mike Pompeo toward a phased agreement in which each side would make paired concessions on a timetable that would stretch out for years, according to a person familiar with the matter. But the Trump administration is wary of making economic and diplomatic concessions up front for steps to dismantle the North Korean arsenal that would only be taken later. The administration favors what one person called a big bang approach in which major concessions would be made by each side early. A freeze in itself is easily reversed, said the senior Trump administration official in the Wall Street Journal. When it comes to allowing economic activity to resume, that is something North Korea is going to have to earn. So Trump holding the line, and he knows he's winning. He knows that his pressure is working, or Kim Jong-un would not be coming to the table. He is willing to lift those sanctions, but he's got to see, got to see more than just padlocking the door of a test center. He's got to see nuclear bombs being dismantled. He's got to see nuclear uh, scientific cap uh, research and things going on shutting down. He's got to see absolute proof and allow test or uh, yeah inspectors to come in and to maintain what's going on. Trump cannot just play the little games that everybody else has played with these guys for so long. And I think Trump will take it a step further. Besides dismantling, I think he's also going to say, hey, wait a minute. Let's talk about also how people are being treated. Let's talk about your prisons. I'm not saying you open the prison doors and let everybody go. But what I am saying, you know, you've got some political prisoners in here. You've got some uh, Christians and spiritual uh, prisoners in here that do not deserve to be treated like this. we got to talk about this. This has got to be part of the deal. I can let up by dismantling your nukes. We can let a lot of these sanctions off. But if you want to get them all off, if you really want to get payments actually loans so let's just hope the president works that into the system he don't like the mistreating of the christians and the and the and the civilians and the women and the children he just don't like it and do you i don't either and i think it's got to be dealt with i really do i think it needs to be dealt with praise the lord did you know there's tornadoes out tonight no where's the tornadoes
there's Fort Walton Beach, and I've seen some over in Alabama. Again? Uh-huh. Where's Fort Walton Beach? Mississippi. Fort Ruckert. Where? Uh, Fort Ruckert sustained tornado damage. That's so, like over in that corner of Okay, here we go. Widespread damage reported after a tornado hit Baldwin County. Let's see, is that Georgia? Where, where, let's see. Baldwin County report injuries have been reported after a tornado in Baldwin County. According to uh, reports, Alabama, Baldwin County, Alabama, the sheriff, Haas Mack, said five people have been injured during today's tornado. And one of the victims, Heidi, is in serious condition. Uh, according to Fox 10 News down there in Alabama, they've received dozens of reports of damage after a tornado way, uh, warned storm crossed Baldwin County. Uh, the tornado warning was issued at 3.26 p.m., Video taken around that time posted on Facebook pages shows what appears to be a tornado in Bridge and D Bridge Dune Trail in the Gulf Shores. So you know where the Gulf Shores area is there of Alabama, right down there near the Gulf. As the storm moved north, more people were able to get video of the tornado as it moved uh, into Foley, Alabama. Several travel trailers at Anchors away RV resort were overturned. Foley said police said a few people were injured there, received medical treatment. As the storm crossed the Highway 59, it caused more damage at Lowe's in Foley. Also, witnesses told Fox that the, the news that several vehicles in the parking lot were destroyed at Lowe's. More damage was also reported in Alberta, Alabama, as the storm moved east. Fox 10 News also had crews on the way to damaged areas and are still updating the story for more details. They're going to come back with more reports later. So to your point, Heidi, Alabama, five injured in one location, one of them seriously. Others are being injured in different places. Um, now here we go with Georgia. They have a tornado watch out right now. In South Georgia, for the counties placed under tornado watch in southern Georgia. And the National Weather Service has issued tornado watch for several counties in North Florida and South Georgia on the Georgia Florida line. Um, you have tornado watches are valid on, for another hour till 10 p.m. Eastern uh, in the Big Bend counties of Jackson, Calhoun, Gulf, Franklin. Gadsden and Liberty. Also, tornado watches have been issued for Georgia's Miller, Seminole, Baker, and Decatur counties. All of it for the next hour up till 10 p.m. Eastern. Mobile users uh, can uh, expect to have some interference. Uh, and you can know this, that when you have that kind of weather, anything and everything can happen. Um, and let's see, we've got some more. Here's some Florida. A funnel cloud has now been spotted in Mol Mol Molino, Florida, with some damage being reported now. A line of strong thunderstorms brought heavy rain and funnel clouds to Pensacola region. Um, that's where Carl Gallops is and some of those folks down there. we got some online members in that area as well. Um, the uh, Mal Malino residents have captured small twisters dipping down in Cab Tree Road. Uh, they've watched the funnel cloud hit the ground, move from Sunshine Hill Road to Molino Road towards Sunshine Hill and Highway 97. Also, five crews were called in and did a damage assessment. We came up with these three structures that do have damage and have debris in the road and one mobile home that was shifted off its blocks. Molino said shortly after the funnel cloud touched down, but no injuries reported there. Another apparent tornado 
touchdown near Foley, Alabama, as we were reading earlier. David Wilson, a spokesman for the Foley Department Police Department. Wilson said the tornado hit the Anchors Away Trailer RV Park, which I just read that to you. Now, National Weather Service meteorologist Deval Johnson said the weather was due to a line of storms crossing near a low-pressure system. The low pressure seems to be adding to the extra rotation we are seeing, said Johnson, who had meteorologists would have to survey the damage before officially declaring the tornadoes had touched down. And uh, so we've got problems down in Alabama, down in Georgia, and in northern Florida. That's as of right now and for the next hour. Those tornado watches and tornado warnings are staying in effect. We'll keep a close eye on them because uh, they do put people in danger. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we pray for all of our online members that are down in these areas that are certainly being affected uh, by these tornado warnings. And don't forget Yellowstone. Yellowstone has been rumbling, has been shaking. There's been multiple earthquake swarms. Uh, also, there was a, an earthquake in California today that shook some people. Robo Mom said it shook her house. Um, it's just incredible what's going on, folks, um, all over the world. But uh, shootings and the naked shooter down in Tennessee, the, uh, the, the tornadoes in Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. Um, all kinds of things. Good news is people are getting saved. Last night at the Occupy conference in Canton, Ohio, we've seen about 15 or so people give their life to Jesus Christ. They come tears falling off their cheeks. I mean, there's young men crying and giving their life to Christ. Uh, people of all ages. And then uh, the, today we were blessed to baptize about 20 people. And it was just a beautiful thing. Uh, I know I baptized five people who have been saved during these live broadcasts like this, and and we baptized five out of the 15 that got saved last night, and then there was a, some more people got baptized. So uh, it's just a great conference. Um, during lunch this afternoon, I was sitting sitting there. We a bunch of us got together: Russ Dizdar and and Ellie Marzulli, myself, and. The Hagmans and Robinson, Joe, and, and um, just a bunch of us got together. And we're just sitting around on the back porch talking. And uh, we were talking about how Coach Dave did a great job of this conference. We were just sitting around all talking how that it's wonderful that the body of Christ is working together, pulling together. And we are doing it online. There's, a, there's an online, the alternative media uh, and the pastors and the preachers and the YouTube personalities that do what we do. We are not going to let the devil win. We are going to fight the good fight of faith. We're going to stand strong in the word of God. We're going to continue to pull the, the folks that are following, the eyes that are opening. You people, you folks, you're the ones that are staying focused and doing the will of God. You're, uh, you're, you show up. You, you pray for one another. You you're, you're awake. You can see what's going on. And, and, and I asked the question, uh, you know, how many of you here, uh, is, how many pastors are here that actually have a church? There was only one man who actually uh, raised his hand, and he was one of the speakers, Pastor Mike Spaulding. I know in Dallas I asked the same question, and there was only one pastor sitting in the crowd out of a 1,000 people, a pastor from El Paso, Texas. So in other words, what's happening is, the pastors right now have not understood the, uh, yet the urgency of what's going on. But the congregations, a lot of the folks are, are coming to these conferences, are coming to these online. Look at this. I mean, look, we had over 1,500 people at one point on YouTube tonight. Um, people come. It's Sunday night. You can't get 1,500 people to go to a church service on Sunday night. But you can online. And what you're seeing is this hunger for the truth, a hunger for the word, a hunger for the information, a hunger for lost souls, a realization. We need, you guys need prayer. I mean, we just read how many prayer requests an hour ago, Heidi. 
People need prayer. They need, they need miracles. They need answers. You know, we need God to move. And faith is a powerful substance, okay? Faith is a substance of things you hope for and the evidence of things not seen. Someone just said to me, Pastor, come to Florida. Okay, I will. I Just there in February, and we had a great time down there. And uh, you're right. I mean, we got to get the people together. We got to get people coming together, working together, praying together online. Or when we get a chance to gather, if we get close to each other, we get a chance to gather. Let's do it. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Uh, I want to read some more prayer requests that are coming in uh, tonight. If you're giving tonight and you're saying, Pastor, I want to send in a tithe or an offering as we always do on Sunday nights, this is a good time to put a prayer request in there so I can just read that and because we're going to bless these offerings tonight as we always do on Sunday night. It's a good time to do that. You can also give by just simply doing text give or you can write us simply if you want to send your Sunday night offering in. You can write me at Paul Bagley Prophecy. Just Paul Bagley Prophecy at 1048-B, uh, uh, 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West, and that's Box 33, Box 33, and that's West Lafayette, Indiana, West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, 47906, and uh, we'd love for you to... Uh, Oh, the four number. Okay, to text. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vicky's put it in there. If if okay, thank you, Billy. And for those of you listening out there, if you want to text in an offering, grab your phone, and and uh, the number is seven six five three two seven forty two hundred. That's seven six five three two seven forty two hundred. One more time, seven six five three two seven. 4200. Text the word give. Just text the word give. Public Prophecy Ministries will pop right up on your phone. You can give through text giving. It's a great way to do it. It really is. And I'm going to look right now at some of these prayer requests that are coming in as people are giving. Um, and so give me a moment here to. Uh, I see that uh, Robert has given an offering tonight. We want to thank you, Robert. God bless you. Kathy. Also sends in her tithe and offering. Says, I work about a mile from where these people were killed at the Waffle House in Anna, Anna, uh, Antioch, Tennessee. Please include the families in your prayers tonight. We will do that, sister. And the super guy that jumped in and knocked the guy out of his, the gun out of that guy's hand and saved many lives. He went to church this morning after this happened to him. That young man did, honey. Yeah, and uh, wow. Sister Alice, who lives down there, says the reason they lost the scent is it's raining cats and dogs. It's raining. It's why they lost the scent. Wow. And the young man who saved the day and saved lives and are end up going to church after this event. And uh, so praise God for him. Uh, we want to thank you, Kathy. Kathy, thank you for sending in your offer. And Kathy says also... Uh, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and we met with you in Opryland. Okay, Kathy, yes, we do, and yes, we did, and we want to thank you. That was a wonderful night, wasn't it? A great night when we were in uh, Nashville, Tennessee back in, uh, was that March or February? It might have been February. I can't remember now. But anyway, there was about 50 of you showed up. We had a really good time having a, the Nashville coffee, we call it. Uh, Sheila is also sending in her offering. She said, you don't have to read this. Uh, it's too long, but okay. God bless you, Kathy. I see it. It is quite long, but we will pray, and it's going to be brought up before the Lord in prayer, no doubt about it. Karen's also sent in her offering tonight. She says, blessings to our online church and Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi. I will see you in a couple weeks in Colorado Springs, Heidi. All right. Karen, and we have saw Karen in Dallas, yeah. and now we're going to see her in Colorado Springs. Praise God, Karen. Thank you, and God bless you. Also, Vaughn. Vaughn sends in an offering tonight. Says, God bless you, Pastor. Uh, God bless you, Paul Begley, and family as well, as your ministry continues success. Oh, that I may touch the hem of your prayer blanket. And like the centurion said, I merely but believe, and our God's good graces go. Wow, powerful 
powerful prayer. God bless you, Vaughn. We believe it in Jesus' name. Also, Leah sends in uh, her tithe and offering, says, please accept this as my offering. Much love from California. Thank you, Leah. We receive it in Jesus' name. Joseph also sends in his offering tonight, says, can I pray for you, Heidi, as you save me, not my wife, uh, you saved me, my wife over a year ago now in September uh, and I'm going back to college as a theologian, trained to be a pastor. So thank you, Pastor Paul and God bless you. So I, I think you did a typo. You said, can I pray for you, uh, for you and Heidi as you saved me and my wife, that's what it was supposed to said over a year ago in September and I'm going back to college for theologian to train to be a pastor. Thank you, Paul. That's amazing. That this is God bless you, Joseph. Praise the Lord. Jeffrey, God bless you for your offering tonight. Beth says she gives her tithe and offering. She says, Hi, Pastor Paul and Heidi. Pastor Paul, I love your broadcast every day. Please pray for my financial breakthrough to come through for me. I really need this to happen. So thank you for all you do. 365 days a year, 24-7. Blessings for all eternity. Uh, Beth, thank you, Beth. God bless you in Jesus' name. That's a wonderful prayer. We appreciate it. And also, uh, Betty sends in her offering tonight. She says, Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi, thank you for all you do. I would like a special prayer for the Lord to open financial doors for me to go back to school. Here's another one. He told me he wants me to go, and I need doors to open financially for this to happen. It's always been in my heart to be a nurse and to work with hurting people. So thank you in advance for the agreement and prayer with me. God bless you both for all you do, Beth, Bethia. Well, God bless you, Bethia, in Jesus' name. Also, Carrie, thank you for your offering tonight, and also Delena. Sends in her tithe and offering. We're praying for the lost to come to Jesus. God bless you, Delana. Thank you so much. We agree with you in Jesus' name. And SDG Marketing sends in their tithe and offering. They said, thank you, Pastor Paul and Heidi. Please pray for the Lord to save my daughter, uh, Amaya. She really needs the Lord. So please pray for my online business to prosper. I also want to pray for Allison Mack. She played in Smallville's 90s TV show. You're right. I know. I've, I read the article. I pray that the Lord saves her. She really needs prayer. Please pray for the lost in this world that Jesus will save them every day. And please pray for me. I feel I'm under attack every day. God bless you. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen, God bless you and thank you. And you know, it is a sad story about Allison Mack and... and and she needs a lot of prayer, and so does the the man that was running this whole thing, this sex cult, whatever in the world, the evil he was doing, and all these young women, the victims of this, uh, they all need our prayers. That they all need our prayers. These are some tr uh, horrific things that are happening out there, folks. It really is, and uh, you know the devil's on the rampage. The devil's on the rampage. I mean, there's no need beating around the bush on this. He is on the rampage. The, the Bible says, The thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And so this is the world we're in. Okay, we're in a world that's... We're in a world that's absolutely filled with wickedness. Filled with wickedness. And uh, the Bible tells us to pray one for another. To lift each other up in prayer. Uh, because uh, we're living in a time like we've never ever seen before. But with prayer, prayer changes things. Prayer changes. The Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And we praise God for that. Shasha also sends in her offering tonight. She says, hi, Pastor Begley. Please pray for my 18-year-old son to accept Jesus into his heart, that he let go of all of his anger and hurt. 
I look forward to meeting you in Long Island, New York. That's right. We're going to be there at the Hear the Watchman Conference coming up in August, August 9th through the 11th. We're going to be in Long Island, New York, Lord willing, at the Lifting the Veil Conference. It's going to be amazing as the Watchman series makes it to New York City. And I'm looking forward to being back in New York, and I've preached there twice now at Harvest Army Church, but once in 2012 and again in 2015. So I'm glad to be back in the New York City area, and this time in a different setting, of course. It'll be at the Watchman Conference, and uh, it's going to be amazing. And then there's Mary Ann. She says, pray for Mary and son Warren and for grandson Warren, we're all sick with the flu, and it's bad. So pray for God to bless Wayne with his healing and custody of his girls. And God bless you and Heidi and amen. And please send a prayer cloth. I lost mine. All right, we'll get one out to you, Mary. Who's this? this is Mary Ann. Does she have an address? Does she have an address? Uh, I'll tell you in just a second if she does. Oh, it's, it's on there. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure. Yep, there it is. Oh, she's out there in... Uh, She's out there in Hawaii, but she's going to see us in New York. What? Mary Ann, you're doing some serious traveling for this one. And uh, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you uh, when, uh, when it's time. All right? Praise God for that. Anyway, you know, we're living in the times when I guess we need to pull together like never before. Uh, this week's going to be real intense. I'm going to be back home tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be real intense this week. I feel that the Russia Russia has not retaliated yet. Russia has not retaliated yet. And just about the time you think that everything's going to go calm on this and that it's just going to it's going to be over with. Trust me, Russia has not responded yet. And and neither and the Iranians have been running their mouth a lot. So there's some dangerous situations here, folks. There is some seriously dangerous situations coming. And I know Trump's trying to open the uh, U.S. Embassy on May 14th, the 70th anniversary of Israel's a nation. That's going to be so unbelievable. And Jack Van Impey's uh, proclamation, the, the visitation he received from Jesus Christ, he's going to be bringing that forward here in the next couple weeks. You have, the, you have North Korea and the United States, the Trump summit with Kim Jong-un that's coming up in late May. There's just a lot going on, folks, and there are many people that are not saved. Many people who have, who have put, and so I'm going to just talk to you. There's some of you listening to me right now. How many times has God spared your life already? Some of you probably shouldn't still be here. If it was if we were to go by some of the things you've done, some of the things you've been involved in, a lot of us maybe shouldn't still be here. But by the grace of God, by God's love and mercy, by his absolute compassion for all of us, for God so loved the world, and when I say that, I'm truly meaning that. He loves the world. You and I, we may struggle with certain people. There might be folks that we might like to say, wow, that guy or that person, whoa, they're way, way out of whack. But God loves all the people in the world, even those who don't worship him, even those who mock him, even those that blaspheme him, even those who hurt others. He still loves everyone, and it's not his will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. And he extends his mercy and grace beyond where you or I would. He reaches out beyond. Our grace runs out. Our patience runs thin. Our, we finally give up sometimes, but God never does. But if you die in your sin, Jesus said, where I'm at, you cannot come. And here's another thing. There are going to be so many people who are going to stand in judgment and say, Lord, I taught in your streets. I was involved with this and that. I was planning on doing right. And he's going to say, depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity. I don't even know you. 
I tried to save you. I reached out to you. You would even drop in and watch Pastor Beckley every so often on the live shows and or you check out his YouTube videos and you kept saying, you know, he keeps giving altar calls and I keep thinking about getting sick. Let me tell you what happened last night. We're given the altar call last night. There was at least 10 people had come forward for salvations. Tears were, were literally dripping off people's cheeks. They were crying in repentance. And the Lord spoke to me and said, there's five more people here that are on the fence that are so close. Five more. And I'm like, whoa. I mean, because I'd already give this altar call for about 10 minutes. It was about 10 people already come for salvation and many others come for rededicating and different things. And the Lord said, there's at least five people here that are on the fence. And as I spoke and the people prayed and the music played, one jumped up and started coming. There was one. Another one broke out on the other side. There was two. Another one broke loose over there. There was three. Another one came down the center of the aisle. That was four. And I waited another minute or so. But the fifth one I did never saw coming. So we started the prayer. But I guess apparently right when I get started the prayer, a fifth person broke loose in the back and came down the aisle. And the folks saw them as they come. I didn't. We prayed with everyone and then realized that the fifth person had come. You know, it was incredible because the Lord wouldn't let me shut that altar call down. He would not let me stop. It was like, okay, I've done enough here. I've reached out. We've went as far. The song's about over. The people have come forward, and nobody else is moving. You know, usually you just go ahead, all right, let's leave. But the Lord said, no, no, no. And I'll tell you, all five of those folks that came were young people. They were all 30 or less, and three of them were young men. And, and I'm telling you, they were in their early 20s or mid-20s, and the tears were flowing. And God was saving them. And I'm going to say tonight, there are people watching me right now, that during this whole show, even before this program started, for the last few days, some of you maybe for weeks, have been considering getting saved. You've been considering getting right with God. Someone said there's right now there's 777 people who have already pushed the button for likes on this broadcast tonight. That's a good number. And there are people here right now who have no intentions of being lost for eternity and ending up in outer darkness in the punishment of hell. You don't plan on it. It's not, that is not where you plan on ending up. You're just seemingly not ready to make the commitment to Christ. But of course, you're being lied to by the devil. And Satan is using every lie he can to delay, 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 because if he can hold you out long enough, then he can distract you with something else, and then he can take you down the road, and he'll take you to a dead-end road. He'll take you further than you want to go, and he'll leave you there longer than you want to stay. But right now, God is saying, listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask this from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to ask you because I know every time I do a live program, there are people who are so close, so close, and then some of them never come back. And I'm afraid to hear that some of them even die and never get in. They were so close, though. It was a Sunday night. It was a, it was a, it was a Tuesday night. It was a Wednesday morning where they were here in the chat room really considering it. I see people right now saying, I'm rededicating. God bless you. I'm going to do this tonight. This has got it. You cannot let Satan finish you off. You don't know when. You'll be sitting in a waffle house in some little town in Tennessee. You have no idea what the next semi you meet on the road is going to do. You don't know what's coming, what, what type of disease or infection. Or, or You don't know what's going to happen. Look, folks, seriously, this heart attacks, are you serious? This is the last days. I'm going to ask you to do something right now. Just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. The moderators will help gather the names. Don't, don't leave here without Jesus. Don't, don't, don't leave here without Christ. Just type, I want to be saved. Pastor, you're right. I've put this off too long. I'm living on borrowed time. I'm really at the edge of my rope. 
I need to get this thing fixed. If I wait around too long, I'm going to be one of those people that's going to miss it. And I had my chance, and God's given me chance after chance. What are you going to do tonight? What are you going to do? Can I play a song? What are you going to do? Let's get saved tonight. Let's not let's not miss heaven. Let's let's not die in our sin. Let's not do this. I mean, this isn't God's plan for you. And oh, by the way, you do not know the peace that's going to come over you. The shalom that's coming into your life is so unbelievable. It's incredible. Let's get saved right now. Right now. Just type, I want to be saved. Let me turn this music down a little because I'm using a different way of doing it. Let's get saved, okay? Let's get saved right now. Just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'm just a poor. Christy B wants to be saved. Christy. And stranger. Also. Amira. Also, Sean Curtis. Praise God. There is no sickness. Also, Alvary Watkins or no Avery. Nor Avery. Danger. Watkins in that bright land. Praise the Lord. Also, Do Javier. Praise the Lord for Javier. I'm a going back. Also, another Watkins. This one's Avon. A V E N. Avon Watkins. And all my love. Praise God. What about you? What about you? Somebody's a periscope need to get saved. You can tweet right on that periscope screen right now. I want to be saved. There's at least one of you over there, periscope needs to get saved. And there's another. And, and Shimley is rededicating. Mark and Alicia are rededicating. They're repenting. And they're asking God's guidance and forgiveness and protection. And uh, is there somebody at Periscope that wants to be saved? Maybe they're watching this on the archive. And is there somebody over at New Live Stream that needs to be saved? Somebody that's watching right now at New Live Stream or at no dark or on Roku. And there's a Ed is rededicating. Ira Jones wants to be saved. Ira Jones. I know my way. How many of us want to be saved tonight? God is speaking to your heart. It's time to be washed in the blood. It's time to be born again. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray with you. Look, I can't save you. Pastor Begley can't save you. Sister Heidi can't save you. But Jesus can certainly save you. He died on the cross for your sins and for mine. And if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Good butterfly is rededicating. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And in power you think not the Son of Man coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Over Jordan. Are you ready to meet the Lord? I'm just a gold. There's seven of you right now that have said, Pastor, I want to get saved. But what about the other seven that are sitting here watching right now? What about the other seven of you that are on the fence? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Tim Robinson is rededicated. God bless you, Tim. This is your hour. This is the moment. See the lights of home shining before me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. No, no, no. But the world through him might be saved. Make that decision right now. Call up on the name of the Lord. Uh, Chrissy B. and Ogmerum and uh, Sean Curtis and Avery Watkins and Javier and Avon Watkins and Ira Jones. And many people are rededicating. I'm going to pray with you folks right now. We're going to pray right now. 
right now. That's a good scripture, Ms. E.D., that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's in the Roman roadmap, Romans 10, 9. Can I pray with you right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. God bless you, Ronald. I'm asking Jesus Christ. Ronald wants to be saved. I'm asking Jesus Christ. I'm asking Yeshua, the Messiah, the Savior, that he would come into my heart and that he would wash me clean in the blood of Christ and that he would forgive me of my sins and make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm asking for his love and mercy. I'm asking for your grace, Lord. I know I don't deserve it. I've sinned, Lord. I've, I've repented of my sins. I confess my sins to God, and I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and to make me new and to take away all the guilt and all the pain and all of the sin and the shame and, 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 and create in me a new heart. Take out that stony heart and give me a heart of love, a heart of flesh. Soften me, Lord. Mold me, Lord. Take me just as I am because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that Jesus ascended into heaven. And I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Are you serious, folks? Are you serious? Welcome to the family. There was at least eight of you. Christy B., Augerman, Sean Curtis, Avery, Avery Watkins, Javier, Avon Watkins, Ira Jones, and Ronald. Welcome to the family. All eight of you, welcome to the family of God. Somebody shout out there because they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. They've been born again by the power of God's mercy and grace. Listen, folks, you're born again. Something happened. I don't feel the same. There's no sin that can take me down. In my new life, I have found I'm born again. Are you serious? You're a new creature in Christ. Free from sin. 
something happens I don't feel the same There's no sin that can take me now Also, Christy Thompson got saved In my Praise God Praise God. Yes, I'm born again, free from sin, and you've been set free by the power of God. I want to I want to welcome you into the family of God. Welcome into the family. All right, praise the Lord. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. They're shouting right now uh, because you folks have given your life to Jesus Christ. This is right. You're right, Pastor Walt. This is the salvation station. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage every one of you that give your life to Jesus Christ. I want you to be baptized. If you can find a pastor, find a church or a Messianic congregation somewhere, tell me you got saved. Tell me you want to be baptized. And it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. If you need help with that, you know, Dr. Rose is out there. She'll help you. You can send an email to uh, converts.2016 at gmail.com. That's converts.2016 at gmail.com. She'll help you find a, a church or a Messianic congregation or a pastor and, uh, in the area where you live. All right? Praise God. If you need a Bible, send an email right now to MissZD01 at hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at hotmail.com and uh, give your name and address, zip code. If you need a Bible, we'll send you a Bible for free and uh, we'll pay for the uh, postage, get it to you no matter where you're at. The Bible's free. If you're sick and you need a, an anointed prayer cloth, we'll get that to you. We'll anoint it with oil, pray over it. If you need a, uh, somebody's real sick out there and we have really bad, we gotta get a blanket to them, we'll do it. Or if you're going through chemotherapy, and need a chemo cap to wear, we anoint those with oil and pray over them as well, as well as the blankets. And we will pay the postage. They're free. We'll get it to you wherever you are because of our faithful partners of Publicly Prophecy Ministries, this amazing online church of believers who have been so strong, so faithful, so powerful in the work of the Lord. And we just praise the Lord for every one of them for what they're doing in Jesus name and let me just say quickly uh, tonight uh, it's as this <clears throat> we're, going, we're coming to Colorado Springs Colorado that's coming up May 4th and 5th also next week this week coming I'm going to tell you about the summer uh, publicly prophecy school of prophecy there's two classes two new classes coming available for the summer so there'll be four you if you haven't if you haven't got involved in our school yet there's four classes to be available this summer two new ones are coming up you're gonna love them and they're not hard the two that the summer are pretty easy so it gives you a chance to, to uh, pick up some credit hours there and also really be inspired if you want to do that but also we'll be talking to you about uh, the uh, Colorado Springs uh, conference that's coming up two nights. We're going to be there two nights. We don't do that very often. We're doing two nights in Colorado Springs. That's May the 4th and 5th, Friday night and Saturday night. And I really want to see you. Sister Heidi, we want to see them everyone, don't we, Heidi? Absolutely. At the Salvation Army. 
We're bringing the Salvation Station to the Salvation Army in Colorado Springs, Colorado. All right, that's coming up. Also, the India. I want you. To, I want to thank you all. The India Crusade. It's it. We we just sent the first uh, installment of uh, funds out there to help pay for the buses, the transportation to get the people to the Crusades. Uh, and there's going to be three, four, maybe 5,000 people. I don't even know. It's going to be up in that neighborhood each night coming. Two nights in one city, three nights in another city. And with these two different crusades that we're organizing, the buses to help get people there, um, busing people in from different parts of the city, and uh, also the tent, huge tents that's going to be put up, plus all the PA system, everything it takes to throw these crusades and our ministry is the one funding it, okay? Not the people in India. We're, go we're going there. This is a mission to win the lost to Christ. We're going into India to the people there to take the gospel of Christ. We're taking the salvation station to the nation of Israel. And, uh, I, mean, I mean, excuse me, India. And um, it's just, I look, thank you. And as you're giving tonight, know that you're making a difference, whether it be in Colorado Springs, Colorado, whether it be in Dayton, Ohio, whether it be in Orissa, India, no matter where it is, or whether it be when we're at the Salvation Station in, in Indiana, no matter where it's at, you're making a difference. Can I say we're going to pray uh, over all of the tithes and offerings that are coming in tonight? And uh, uh, if you want to give, there's three different ways to give. And, and so the ladies, the uh, all of our moderators, Rowan as well out there, if they'd like to um, put the uh, three ways to give. One is to go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com and there's some police and stuff going on here. I don't know what's going on out on the road. I hope it's not an accident. Um, but uh, if there's three ways to give, one way to give is to just go to our website right now at paulbegleyprophecy.com Just go there right now and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart and if you want to leave a prayer request or a praise report, you can do that right now. I'd love to. Uh, we're going to pray over all of these, and we certainly want you to know that. There's a. Um, Corey has just sent in an offering. God bless you, Corey. Also, Perry sends in an offering tonight, says, Please pray for Deborah and I uh, to get better jobs. I feel the persecution in my job. I need to make a change. And Deborah has to work in a very toxic environment. Pray for both these folks, okay? Pray for these folks as they're giving their, that, look, they're being faithful to God. They're giving tonight. But at the same time, they're asking for uh, the body of Christ to pray for them. And we're praying. And also there's Sheila. Sheila sends in her uh, offering tonight. She says, hi, Pastor Paul and Heidi. Please pray for my daughter and granddaughter who are moving to Indiana. I pray for God's protection over them. Please continue to pray for my family's salvation. Pray that my husband, Ed, is asking uh, you, you'll be on again. Uh, tell Ed I'll be on tomorrow night. I won't be on tomorrow at noon. I'll be driving back to Indiana. I'll be back live tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, okay? Um, we love you and Heidi and all my brothers and sisters of this amazing online church. And so, Sheila, God bless you and thank you. Yes, we'll be back on tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we just praise God for you and God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. I'm going to wait another three, four minutes. Let people, there's three ways to give. You can give tonight or get your Sunday night offering in there. Uh, you can do it tonight by simply uh, going to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. And hitting the easy button, as Billy Nitrain would say, hit the hit the donate button there at the at the top. Just go to publicandprophecy.com, look toward the top. You'll see it. Donate, hit it. Give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Another way to give is to get your phone and simply text give. You could just the number to text to is 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. And text the word give, and then Paul Bagley Prophecy Ministries 
pops right up on the screen on your phone and you can give very easily there and uh, it's a great way to give a great way to do it anytime you'd like to give right now on Sunday Night Live as we're lifting the offering as we always do Sunday Night Live and this is a great time to do that and then a third way to give if you'd like is just the old fashioned way just write us and send a check or money order in the mail put it in the mail first thing in the morning uh, write it right now and send it to this address write the check out to Paul Begley Prophecy Paul Begley Prophecy and send it in the mail to Paul Begley Prophecy 1048-B that's 1048-B 1048-B Sagamore Parkway West that's Sagamore Parkway West Sagamore Parkway West box 33 that's box 33 box 33 uh, West Lafayette, Indiana. That's West Lafayette, Indiana. West Lafayette, Indiana. 47906. That's 47906. All right. And give whatever the Lord lays on your heart tonight. We want you to know that God loves you. We love you. And we appreciate what you're doing. And God's making, it's making a difference in the souls. And people are coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And this is an amazing online church. It's some amazing, faithful people that make up this incredible body of Christ. And we're touching the world with the goodness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's just incredible. We're taking the salvation station to the nations. And uh, you and I together, along with the power of Jesus Christ, can lead the lost to Christ in these last days. We're in the end times. We are in the end times. And I... I didn't, never thought I would ever see anything like what I've been watching and seeing, the evil, the wickedness, the pressure, the wars, the rumors of wars, the manifestations in the heavens, the asteroids, the meteorites, the, the waves of energy, the, uh, the tsunamis, the tornadoes tonight. We're praying for everybody down south and all their things that are going on. It's just a time like never before. It really really is. Can I pray with you tonight? I want to bless these offerings and tithe tonight. Let's do it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you for blessing your people. We thank you, Lord, for um, always being faithful. You, Lord, you said, if we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into our bosom. Lord, you told us, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. Lord, you told us that if we'd be faithful over a few things, you'd make us a ruler over many. And Lord, in your word, you said that if we bring our tithe and offering unto you, you said, prove you, test you, see if you won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing we wouldn't have room to contain. Lord, and you would rebuke the devourer. You would rebuke the devil for your sake, Lord, that you would drive them back and bless your people, Lord. And Father, we just thank you when Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give in your bosom, Lord, you meant it for every one of us. And Lord, I thank you, God, that you'll protect every one of these families. Bless their homes, bless their families, bless their jobs. God, if they need new jobs, help them to get new jobs. Some of them are sick, Lord, need healing in their bodies. Some are praying for their children to be saved. Some are praying for their marriages to be restored. Some are praying, God, that you would uh, help them. They've got entanglements. They, some of their finances are tied up, Lord, in, uh, in, in inheritances that are wrangling it up with the lawyers and there's issues. Fathers, others, Lord, waiting on insurance settlements to come in, Lord. God, it needs to happen. Would you release it? Would you break the entanglements? Lord, there's others that are praying about their 401k. And others are praying about what to do about, uh, Lord, about their Social Security or, or maybe one of their pensions they're supposed to get. God, would you just send the blessing upon their homes? Give them 
you said, Lord, you, I believe it's Paul, uh, Paul or Peter said, I would that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And Lord, I'm so glad David said that whatever we put our hand to shall prosper if we're meditating in your word day and night. So Lord, just help us. We just want to thank you. We humbly come before you and thank you, God, for this wonderful group of people that you have privileged us to be a part of in this great family. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And God bless all of you. It's been a wonderful night. I'm a little tired tonight, so I think what I'm going to do is get a little rest. And uh, tomorrow, pray for Sister Heidi and I as we will be traveling home. Uh, and so tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, I'll be live back in the Salvation Station. Uh, and we hope to see you guys then tomorrow night. All right. Also, I'll try to do some videos as I travel. We'll keep you up to speed, everything going on. God bless all of you. We love you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? I'll see you guys tomorrow, Lord willing, in Jesus' name.